Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. So, Maya 2020 is officially out and today we're going to be taking a look at the dynamic caching feature that exists in Maya. So, in 2019, there was uh, a feature that was added which actually deals with caching. So, the caching helps you play back your animation in a much more faster frame rate by caching the animations directly on the timeline using either the evaluation hardware or software to you know get these caches out and with 2020 there is something that has to do with you know dynamic caching right now and today we're going to try this out and one of the cool things which they talked about is you know the caching does not just work for animations alone but it also works for subdivision and at the same time it does work for things like clot so we're going to try out that clot thing today and see how it goes this is Maya 2020 and you can see by default there is actually no huge change so if you want to actually get the cache thing going on you need to come over here and you need to make sure that this is turned on and by default once you you know click here the evaluation method actually kicks in and the evaluation cache is what we're going with but for you to be able to get the dynamic caching working what you need to do is to come over here where you have the cache playback preference and you definitely need to click that and from here i'm actually turning on cache dynamics and at the same time i'm also turning on cache smooth meshes so if you don't turn on these two you may probably not get any difference from you know the previous version of Maya and this one so what we're going to do is to try out something very simple then we'll proceed to try out something with characters and maybe something with an animation so by default I'm just going to simply throw a simple cylinder here then the next thing which I'm going to do is throw up a simple grid and let's just simply expand that grid a little bit more and finally I'm going to add a clot so I'm coming over to the effects tab make this a clot and at the same time i'm selecting this so which i need to do is to make this a passive object so by simply clicking that i'm making this a passive collider which simply means that this would collide with this one okay so you would notice that by default we have two lines so in the previous version which is 2019 there was just this blue line but now you can see we have pinkish line running through that actually represents you know what you get when you have something like dynamics turned on so i'm going to press the playback so we can get this and you definitely see that we have playback going on next thing which i need to do is to go ahead and smooth this i'm smoothing this i'm pressing this all the way back so you can see it's caching it's caching it's caching using the evaluation method and you can also switch this to hardware cache or software cache depending on what you want to get and then i can press the playback one more time and you can see we have some very clean result now let's go over to maya 20 18 to actually see what we have since uh, you know 2018 and 2019 actually had the same thing in terms of you know uh, dynamics so i'm also going to scale this one a little bit more press t on my keyboard turn this to 30 30 and i'm also going to you know take this one up so i'm taking this all the way up and just right there i'm also going to do exactly the same thing fx turn this to clot and turn this to a passive object so i'm turning this to a passive object i'm actually going to reduce this a little bit more and i'm going to press the playback and by pressing the playback you can see how much time we're getting from this okay so you can see how slow it is for this to just process okay let's smooth this out and see what we can get and if i smooth this out you can see our frame rates are actually dropping you can see how slow this is okay so if we switch back to maya 2020 and actually go all the way back and press the playback you can see our frame rates a bit higher all right and you can see the clothes happening in real time this actually makes a lot of sense so let's scale this a little bit more let's just scale this a little bit more and you can also see that any of the adjustments which we make to this is actually working really nice so with that done the next thing which we're going to do is to try an animation with this so how do you think this would react to animation let's go ahead and try this out so that we can see what we can get so for this now what i'm going to do is i'm definitely going to scale this one just a little bit about that height and i would keyframe this by pressing s on the keyboard you can keyframe that and i'm going to move this all the way to about 25 and i'm definitely going to move this all the way up to this point and put another keyframe and by just putting the keyframe you would see that the clot is automatically trying to adapt to 
wherever the animation is going to so without even pressing the playback you can see the clothes is trying to adapt to this okay so i'm moving this all the way to 50. next thing which i want to do is to try some rotation so let's try some rotation and let's uh, move this to a different point so i'm just going to rotate and move this over to this point and press s on the keyboard so i'm, I'm not going to wait for this i'll move this to 75 I'm also going to come over here and choose to scale this. I'm going to scale this a little bit more. And yeah, so let's see what we can get with that animation going. So with this here, we now have a frame at 0, a frame at 25, a frame at 50, and another one at 75. And you can see how cool the clot is automatically, you know, appending itself to this object, owing to the fact that the background caching is happening as cool as we can see so i'm going to press the playback and you can see that and you can see how clean this is i kind of think that this is a huge improvement i next thing that we're going to do is to head over to mixamo get a character from there try something that deals with you know real-time animation animation that actually includes a human character and then we're going to see how we can append a clot to that object and definitely see how it responds all right guys we're here at mixamo and mixamo is an amazing place where you can get very cool 3d characters and at the same time you can get cool animation baked to these characters so all you have to do here is to log in it's totally free so you can get cool stuff here and you can go over to the character section and find characters now i'm actually looking for a very cool character i can work with you know they actually updated you know they updated the character library and they do have some very nice characters here so let's actually so let's scan through this place to see if we can find some cool characters i'm definitely going to go for 96 per page so let's scan through all of these characters look pretty clean they look pretty nice i would go for something something cool yeah so i think something like this would be really nice so i'm getting this character and i need to also get a motion which i want to apply to this character so let's switch over to animation and we're going to find something cool with this one so i'm definitely coming over here and i need something that has to do with the quick motion so let's find something that might probably deal with the punch i think a punch would uh let's find something with a quick punch okay and i think we can we can work with something like this so this looks really cool we're going to get this punch and the next thing which we need to do is to download this and then we'll get back into maya all right so with this model loaded directly into maya you can definitely see that by default maya has gone ahead to cache this so let's just play this back and see what we have and you can see we have this from here i think what we downloaded is 30 frames so let's go through and switch that to 30 frames per second and see what we can get and this is pretty fast i gotta tell you this is pretty pretty fast okay so with this here i think we'll need to actually see some textures i guess a couple of people will be like where the textures at so let's get these textures out i'm going to simply scale this you know just put something on the floor something to just mimic the floor and next thing which i need to do is you know come over here click this part so that you can see the textures go over to rendering drop an ambient light drop a directional light press 7 or click here so you will be able to see this next thing i need to do is press t on the keyboard and just simply position this properly so just in case you're wondering how these things are done there you go all right i would want to get rid of these because i don't want to see I don't want to see this stuff okay so you can come over to show go down to where i have joints and you can take that off character looks really clean and cute like this character already all right so we have this object here and uh you know the playback is really cool nice nice okay so this is really nice now let's see if we append uh, a clot to this how that clot would respond so for that clot next thing which i need to do is to pick up a grid so i'm just going to use the same grid that we have just simply duplicate it by holding down shift and i would scale this down now by simply scaling this down next thing which i need to do let's turn off this light a little bit and i will simply bring this over here and go through pinch this a bit like that rotate this turn this and bring it down so in case you're wondering how this is or how you know this actually 
ended up looking like this if you hold down control and shift and right click you can change this to either world object or component all right so you can change this to either of them so i'm just going to you know stick with object right now and i'm simply just going to go ahead and rotate this as much as i want so next thing which you need to do is just simply position this properly so i would go ahead and make a shape the shape of a cape all right so with our cape here the next thing which we want to do is simply grab onto this and then we'll go over to the modeling section and just kind of subdivide this a little bit so we can get some you know we can get some more looking clip the formation from here so i'm going to subdivide this by two you can simply click here and type the word two just to get some more subdivision or if one is enough for you you can simply leave it at that so next thing which we need to do is to come over here and define these as clots then we can also click here or click on this mesh and then we can click this to define this as collision now by simply doing those two things i'm going to simply go back all right i'm going back to frame one we are have everything all sorted out i'm going to just raise this a little bit upwards and then you can notice that once i press the playback i would definitely not get as much features as i want so if i go ahead and press the playback you see the object doesn't follow the character all right so what we want to do is we would like to pin this object to this character and see what happens so one cool thing with maya is that we can just simply you know select one particular vertex point and press f just to zoom right close i can right click select edges select this edge and move over to the other edge and simply double click so i can just simply double click here and if i hold down the control key or command key on the mac right click i can switch this to vertices and just say i want to select the vertices so by selecting the vertices i can still hold down shift with this object selected and select the other object which i want to bind this to so i'm selecting this other object and now i need to switch over to the effects tab and with the effects tab turned on i will also go over to the end constraint and point to surface all right so once I make this point to surface, you can see we have all of those things there. Then the next thing which you need to do is just simply allow Maya to cache this. So you can actually see the caching going on there. So while this caching is going on, let's just go ahead and turn on the light and see what we have. Probably we can also go through and just turn on the shadows probably and you know maybe turn on ambient occlusion and they have actually you know done a very good job when it has to do with the viewport so i kind of think that this viewport looks really really nice now compared to what we used to have especially when you're trying to shade with maya right now the viewport kind of make a lot of sense all right so by just simply pressing the playback you can see that the cloth is moving flawlessly with this object we can go in there and subdivide this one more time but you know you can also you know press 3 on your keyboard to get a very cool subdivision so with this running what is left right now is for you to go in there and play with the clots you know if you want to change how the dynamics are if you want to make some changes to this probably you want to make some changes to you know the drag you want you want to make some changes to how much stretching it can have you want to maybe probably make some changes to the rigidity you can make all of those changes directly here and of course the caching is just going to get all of this data and make your life way easier you can see that instead of having those waiting time that we regularly used to have in previous versions of maya right now this is running really really cool i'm quite excited about this new implementation and i'm very very excited about the new caching feature i would like to know what you guys think about it in the comment section and that's about it if you want to get a copy of maya link to that is going to be in the description if you have questions about this please put them in the comment section as well and i'm going to do my best to answer them and of course if you like this video and you learned something from it go ahead and give it a like and don't forget to turn on the notification and if you're new here it's going to be amazing if you can hit the subscribe button and also turn on the notification so you don't miss the next video or the next update and until i see you guys again with the tutorial update free friday tutorial tuesday tips and tricks things like this peace